Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to talk in the series of patient education of Mubarak Akabir Hospital Gastro Club with the endoscopic retrograde pancreaticocholangiography. On the other name is ERCP. ERCP was done at first in 1968 in the States, but from 1967 it became a standard method to visualize the pancreaticobiliary ductal system. The ESCP has revolutionized the diagnosis of pancreaticobiliary ductal system. In the beginning, it was pure uh, diagnostic procedure, but the implementation of 1974 of endoscopic sphincterotomy, it gave a chance to treat, not only diagnose the pancreaticobiliary ductal system diseases. This procedure, as we can See from the name, this is a combination of endoscopic procedure plus the usage of the X-ray and visualize with the injection of the dye into pancreatic duct and the common bile duct, the dye to visualize the ductal system. This patient is an invasive procedure. From this reason, we have to inform the patient before the procedure about the procedure itself. What are the complications, what are the risks, and what are the benefits of the procedure? The patient, this is procedure, we have to insert at first the scope into the second part of the duodenum. After the insertion of the scope in the second part of the duodenum with the special cannula through the working channel of the the endoscope, we have to cannulate the bile duct or the pancreatic duct. This is one of the most challenging and most difficult procedure. One of the reasons because we have only one orifice of the ampulla of fatter, where the bile and the pancreatic juice is entering to the duodenum. From anatomical point of view, easiest to cannulate the pancreatic duct. In this part of the region of the world, the indication of the ESCP is mainly biliary origin. More than 90% of our patients are belonging to the biliary ductal system diseases. After we have to ask the patient before the procedure, the patient is taking any medication, especially very important to get information about the antiplatelets medication the anticoagulation treatment, we have to know the patient has, take, has had any surgery before the procedure. We have to inform the patient all the risk, benefit, and complication. Especially important to inform the patient about the complication. Because this procedure is an invasive procedure, it has definitive certain complication, which can be due to the procedure itself or the therapeutic procedure as well. One of the most common complications of the procedure is the pancreatitis. It means we'll, during, due to procedure, we'll develop acute inflammation of the pancreatic tissue. The pancreatitis can be due to the procedure itself. It has, can develop due to the patient, different type of patient, due to the procedure it, itself and plus due to the endoscope is the gastroenterologist is doing the procedure itself. For example, the young female patient have the highest risk to develop pancreatitis. In certain situations, this pancreatitis cannot be avoided. It's the genuine complication of the procedure. Usually, the incidence of pancreatitis of, of ERCP is not more than 5%, but the young female patient with normal bilirubin level the normal biliary ductal system on the endoscopy of the sonography has the highest risk of, of pancreatitis. If we do to the patient ceratic procedure, including endoscopic sphincterotomy, when we cut the muscle of the fatter papilla to do therapeutic intervention of the pancreatic or the biliary ductal system, it has involved additional risk of complication. This is the bleeding. The bleeding can usually, the incidence is not more than 1 or maximum 2%, but these bleedings usually are mild. Very severe bleeding can occur only rarely. 
the other complication of the procedure is the perforation. Perforation can be due to the scope itself, but it's extremely rare, or to the therapeutic procedure of during the endoscopic sphincterotomy. The, usually the perforation rate is less than 1%. The other complication of the procedure is the infection. If the patient has biliary duct obstruction, if he we are unable to make the bridge to relieve the obstruction during the procedure. Risk of infection is very high, especially the cholangitis. The indication of the procedure, including biliary indication and pancreatic indication. The most common indication of the ESCP is the common biduct stone. A postoperative complication in the area of laparoscopic cholecystectomy the indication of the ESCP is increased, especially because during the laparoscopy, if they are going to find stones in the common biduct, they don't do during the laparoscopic cholecystectomy. If the patient has benign or malignant stricture, also we can do palliative treatment or therapeutic treatment as well. The other indication of the biliary origin is insertion of the stent. During the stent insertion, we insert a small tube into the biliary ductal system to make a bridge between the proximal level of the stricture and, and the duodenum. The stent can be plastic stent or metallic stent. The pancreatic indication is the most common is acute recurrent pancreatitis. The other indication is very important, the chronic pancreatitis, but this area of, of the region is the chronic pancreatitis quite rare and pancreatic duct disruption. If the patient underwent the procedure, with usually with deep sedation, after the procedure is finished, we have to follow the patient. We have to keep the patient in the recovery room. In the recovery room, everything is doing well. The patient can go home or the patient can go back uh, to the medical wards. I hope this short information was beneficial for the patient and the relatives of the patient who are going for ERCP in the future. Hello, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is the special scope, the dodenoscope with that machine. We do the endoscopic retrograde cholangiopancreatography. To compare with the regular scope, this is a side viewing scope, not forward viewing scope. It has a port for the working channel. It has elevator of the cannula with we can manipulate the special cannula with that we cannulate the pancreatic duct or the biliary duct through this working channel. We insert the cannula, the endoscopic sphincter or or the other accessories which we need during the therapeutic procedure of the ERCP. I'm going to start the procedure. The patient now in the supine position. This is not a regular position of the patient, but certain situations we have to put the patient on the the supine position because he's a high risk patient and the patient is under the surveillance for the anesthetist and the patient is under the sedation. Now I'm going to insert the scope into the mouth of the patient. Swallow please, swallow. Okay, now the scope is inserted into the esophagus. Now I'm going to the stomach. Now I'm in the second part of the duodenum. This patient had procedures before. Of course he has a malignant stricture of the Duodenum, it was inserted a plastic stent to make a free biflow to relieve the obstruction. Now we are going to change the plastic stent for the metallic stent. Now at first I try to remove the plastic stent. You can see the blue outer part of the stent. Now I remove the stent. Okay, now we are inserting the stent over the wire. Now you can see the stent on the endoscopic picture. Now the stent is inside. Now we try to release the stent. Okay, release slowly. Now you can see the metal stent outside of the ampulla. It's a proper position. It's a good flow. Okay, thank you very much for everybody.